CBS4 investigation into police officers who break the law. Our investigation found a loophole that could allow Hoosier officers convicted of serious crimes to get a job in your community. CBS4's Kelly Rinke investigates working to get answers, in fact, and what's being done to get them off the streets. Once in a while, there are going to be bad officers on the street. Am I on one? Where is your emergency? I'm at Burger King right now, um, and there is like a fight happening um, outside the parking lot. It was the summer of 2018. Kentucky police responded to a fight involving an off-duty Indianapolis police officer. One just pulled a gun. Police say Jeremy Fusler was following his dad most of the day, trying to catch a meeting with a woman so he could take pictures and show his mom proof. Fusler admits he briefly pointed a gun at his dad when he charged him, and the girlfriend claims Fusler said, I'll shoot you. Fusler was later charged with a felony and a misdemeanor, but he's still wearing a badge. Does it surprise you that this officer is currently working in Indianapolis? It does. Absolutely. Charles Braun was an attorney for the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy for decades. Fusler pleaded guilty to two misdemeanor counts of disorderly conduct. Former Chief Brian Roach tried to fire him, but the Civilian Police Merit Board rejected that recommendation. That's uh, very sad. But of course, the, the chief's hands are tied when the civilian board doesn't go along with the termination. Braun also helped create the current state law giving the training board power to revoke an officer's certificate. After an officer is convicted of a felony or at least two misdemeanors that would cause a person to believe the officer is potentially dangerous or violent or shows a propensity to violate the law. But the loopholes make it possible for officers convicted of even more serious crimes to get a job in your community. I think what we're really, really striving for is to ensure that nobody does, you know, squeak through the cracks. Lafayette Police Chief Patrick Flannelly is a member of the training board. I showed him several examples of convicted officers maintaining their certifications. We should make sure that we have good systems in place so if somebody has done something that would violate the, um, the statute uh, that would require decertification that we get that done so they don't get hired someplace else. Hi, I'm Officer Wiesefeld. How are you tonight? This Crawfordsville officer was found yeah, breaking I, the law with his own I body camera you. rolling. See the track going here? Yep. All the way through there. Investigators say Jeremy Wiesefeld was on duty when he smashed his police car into this woman's sidewalk, causing damage to her walkway and did not stop. This video shows him coming back to that house. Can they find the, whoever did it? With that You're watching him investigate the hit and run he just committed. He's even bagging pieces of his own patrol car as evidence. Well, if you guys find somebody's running and you see them missing that part, yeah. you want to hold on to it. I mean, it's a stretch. Wiestefeld resigned and was found guilty of official misconduct, a felony. But he's not one of the 45 officers whose certificates were pulled by the training board since 2007. At least the part number. I mean, it's not serial, serial. But. Three years after his conviction and after I told the board he still had a certificate, the board is finally in the process of revoking it. We've made initial contact with them, given them the opportunity to voluntarily relinquish their LATB certification. We also asked about two officers formerly with IMPD, including David Butler, sentenced to eight years after four felony convictions. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You may also remember the David Bassard case. He killed a motorcyclist and injured two others while driving drunk on the job. Bassard's certificate was never revoked either. Here's David Watts, another member of the Law Enforcement Training Board. I'm all for making sure that we tighten this thing up. But I would hate to portray it as we've got a bunch of police officers running around um, who are not fit for duty and that somebody's been lax in their duty. Yeah. And here's the loophole. The training board does not have clear legal authority to conduct their own investigations of these cases. They must rely upon police departments or someone from the public to report a convicted officer. I don't want this to seem like it's a huge problem, but it's definitely something. But it's it, concerning enough that you guys are oh, addressing absolutely. it. Oh, absolutely, yeah, because, you know, um, you just don't want to take that chance of, of someone winding up working somewhere else where they shouldn't. But that brings us back to IMPD officer Jeremy Fusler, convicted of threatening his father with a gun. The previous chief tried to fire him, but the current IMPD chief sits on the board that could revoke his certification. What is your message to Chief Taylor with this officer on our streets in Indianapolis right now? With two misdemeanor convictions, violent oriented, I would highly encourage the chief to have his staff to submit it to 
to the Law Enforcement Training Board for review in terms of revoking the basic training certificate. That makes a lot of sense to me. In Indianapolis, I'm Kelly Rinke, CBS4 News. So after we told the training board about the officers with felony records, the board is now in the process of revoking certificates. Those include David Bissar, David Butler, and Jeremy Wiestefel. And we also learned the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy is working with lawmakers to draft new legislation. They hope different language will firm up reporting obligations so no convictions escape the training board. The academy also says that was in the works before we reached out for our story. We'll keep you updated as we continue to investigate.